Hey gang, AV here, and welcome to my review of the Boss Fight Studios Vitruvian Hacks Blasted Land Orc, the Savage Warrior. Uh, here he is in the package. As you can see, he is a carded figure, but he's not a blister card. Um, he is removable. It's collector-friendly packaging. Um, he has a very nice uh, card art right there. He's a Blasted Land Orc. That is his... Um, occupation right there um, in case you're wondering what hack stands for it stands for highly articulated character kit system basically means that everything you see in there is interchangeable with other figures in the line including his body parts um, it is an adult collectible and before we flip it over I just wanted to point out that this started out as a New Jersey collectors con exclusive but was available at least the last time I checked on their uh, web store, which is bossfightstore.com. Uh, um, and what separates him from the other uh, orcs in the uh, line is that he is red with gold accessories as opposed to being green um, with uh, aged like metal um, steel accessories so anyhow let's flip him over and as you can see right away he has a file card and I say this every time I review a boss fight figure I love the fact that he has a file card I grew up with GI Joe's and uh, the fact that they took the time to include a file card and you know flesh out the character uh, give him a backstory and everything else I love that. I, it just it just makes the the whole line and the figures themselves that much uh, more appealing to me as a collector and a fan. Um, but anyhow, uh, if you would like to read the file card instead of listening to me ramble on, uh, <laughs> feel free to pause the video and do so now. Okay, again, big fan of the file cards. I'm a little OCD, so I gotta fix my, my background just a little bit. There we go. Couldn't help it. Saw something wrong, had to fix it. I am a little OCD, I guess. More so than I realized. But anyway, <laughs> here are the other figures available in the line. Um, this is the first wave, this is the second wave. You will not see him there because he was, like I said, originally going to be an exclusive figure and he still is to some degree um this was the first wave second wave um these are all from series two which is the fantasy line i do have all of these figures if you have not seen reviews of these figures up on my web up on my uh, youtube channel you will see them in the future i promise you i am reviewing all of them in due time uh here is a qr code to, which will take you directly to the Boss Fight store. I, I'm sorry, it was BossFightShop.com. That is the website. So, And without further ado, let's get them out of the package. Now to do so, all you got to do is bend over these flaps here. I usually just do that one side. And then I slide the card out enough to get the figure out. He has two figure trays. Get them out of there. Get the card off to the side, out of the way. Adjust the camera a little. And that is still messed up. Man, okay. <laughs> and now we got the two figure trays to work with. Now, like I said, he has all the same accessories as the green orc. But we'll go over them again because they do have different paint apps and whatnot. And maybe you haven't watched that video yet. Um, but anyhow, this bag, and even though this is a collector-friendly packaging, I will point this out. A lot of the accessories, like the smaller stuff especially, come in these bags. They are taped closed when you first open the figures. And they, uh, the tape they use is not very forgiving. So it either rips the bag as you try to remove it, or um, winds, up, winds up ripping itself. 
So what I'm trying to say is even though you can remove everything from these packets and put them back, you'll never get it back exactly as it was. I mean, it will be tamper evident. So don't think that just because it's collector friendly packaging that it will be mint on card after you'd open it. It won't be by a lot of people's standards, including mine. Um, also, because it is collector friendly packaging, you are going to want to make sure that uh, you can see as many of the items as possible through the bubbles when you open the figure or when you per before you purchase the figure to make sure that all the items are there. Because, you know, not to say, I'm not saying anybody's going to purposely rip you off, but um, it is highly likely that some of these smaller things may actually uh, get lost while the figure is out of the package before it goes back in. So you want to make sure that you get everything you're paying for. All right. So basically, these are tiny little... Uh, armor pieces there's spiked armor pieces and yes the spikes are sharp despite the fact that it's small and these go on to his thighs i'll demonstrate that now usually i don't take the figure out till the end but i'll take them out just so you can see so these just peg in to the sides of his thighs they do i promise all right there you go See? And they fit pretty securely in there, too. Um, once you get them in there, they're not going to come out. Unless you purposely yank them out. They hold pretty firmly in there. Alright, not ready to look at the figure yet, so he's going to go off to the side. Put these back in here so I don't lose them. Here's the other bag. And again, tape. I'm not even going to fight with it. I'm just going to cut it. <clears throat> Dump that stuff out. Okay, and here you have a variety of different items. You got his figure stand, which is in the shape of the Boss Fight Studio logo. It's got two foot pegs, and it works remarkably well. Um, I've never had an issue getting the figure's feet on there, and I've never really had a problem with the figure falling over on it either. It's a solid, solid base for the figure. Um, he also has a helmet, which is often warped, but it, you can wedge it on top of the figure, and it will fit fine. So I'll demonstrate that now with his extra likeness you do have to watch with his ears because they are pointy and they will give you a little bit of a of grief getting the helmet on there <laughs> as it's doing right now but it does fit It's pretty snug. This review is going to be all over the place, I can tell now. He has two different head sculpts, as you can see. One with a beard and one without. Eyes and teeth are all painted. Very nice. He does have pointy ears on, all, on both. Put that back in there. Um, you'll see that the, the helmet itself does have um, pegs on either side. This is to facilitate his face plates, and he has two of them as well. He's got a skull themed face plate. Again, in this uh, gold or copper color. Very nice. Um, they do fit over the pegs. However, I do recommend that you heat, heat it up before you try to put it on there. Um, Sometimes these are known to crack, although this one, probably not so much. These are pretty flexible. But also, it'll make getting them on that peg a lot easier if you heat it up. It'll, it'll give you a lot more stretch, and you'll be able to really shape it and get it on there properly. Um, 
So that's why I'm not going to do it right now. Not only that, but it's also a little warped out of the package. So it needs to be reshaped with a hair dryer anyhow. Uh, anyhow, uh, that was the one face plate. Here's the other one. Um, just like the head sculpts, one of the face plates has a beard and the other one does not. So this is the bearded skull face plate. So you can pose your figure with a with a decent amount of variety, and, and I really enjoy that. Um, he has another helmet if you decide to use one without the face plate. And that is right here. And this is clearly uh, inspired by the uh, Dungeons and Dragons War Duke helmet. And this also looks really good on the figure, um, just to help demonstrate it. Let me take this figure, for example. His eyes are visible through the helmet, right where they should be. And I forgot to mention, when you had the faceplate on the other helmet and put it on the figure, you can still see the figure's eyes through the faceplate, too. So it's a very nice touch. Um, what else is in this bag here? We have his fur cape which goes on the back of the figure and i will demonstrate that when we get to the uh, arm pads and he has this this is the head of a mace it has a peg hole to go on to the mace um but it doesn't appear as though he came with a mace handle uh so that's unfortunate not sure if I can actually apply this to anything he does come with. No, it won't fit on there. And that's a shame. But, uh, yeah, so basically this is the head of a mace, but he doesn't have the handle for the mace. And he also has another set of hands. I've also discussed this in every review I've done for Boss Fight Studios. Um, basically his hands, he has two, two sets of uh, grasping hands. One set with a hinge that allows his hands to bend up and down. The other set bends in and out. So, depending on how you choose to pose your figure or what accessories you give him, he can hold it naturally in his hands. Uh, what else he got? He's got his mallet, which is excellently detailed. It looks like a, it looks like a log. Looks like an actual wooden log. It's got a spike on the end, nice wooden handle with leather wraps around it, and these uh, metal spikes hammered onto the edges. Very, very cool. Easily my favorite accessory of his. He has a knife, or I'm sorry, a sword, which looks like it was carved from, uh, I guess, a piece of slate. It's a stone sword with an edge and a leather wrapped handle and he's got a shield try to get that out of there without spilling everything in the tray because it's form fitted in there all right this is a very cool accessory as well um just going over the details of it it's, it's got a nice wooden grain on there um a nice uh, battle ravaged uh, metal edges um, it's got a buttressed area that's actually hollowed out on the inside it's got a hand handle right there it has these two hoops here so that you can actually string a, a string through to actually um, have it wearable on his back and as I've demonstrated with this shield in the past other molds of this shield in the past if you have any arrows from one of your elven figures you can actually wedge them into these cracks whoops that wasn't a very good demonstration but you can wedge them into these cracks to make it look like he's been under fire and the arrows are sticking out of the shield um, you can do that at various points on the shield itself so you can have a couple sticking out of it it's very cool very cool i'm not sure if they did that intentionally but I gave it a shot. I was very excited when I saw that I was able to do that, and 
I've been doing it ever since when I pose my figures. So, anyhow. Uh, what else you got? Okay, we got the shoulder pads. Now, these are spiked. And again, these are sharp. Just like the, uh, the ones on the helmet and everything else. And if you look on the bottom, there is a R and the other one has an L. So they are um, shoulder specific. There are peg holes inside his armor. And you kind of want it to go over his shoulder. So you want to put the off center side closest to his neck. And that's how he wears that. And again, he's got one for either shoulder. And to wear his cape. Ah, come on off of there. You basically utilize these holes, put the pegs through the hole, and then put the peg into his shoulder like that. And that way he can wear his cape on his back. And that's it for his accessories. Let's have a look at the figure himself, finally. <laughs> it amazes me how long it actually takes to, for me to get to the figure sometimes. And I apologize for that if you're a little impatiently waiting to see the figure itself. But the accessories are just as important sometimes, if not more so. He's got a very nice paint scheme on him. Very nice. I, I actually do really like the gold on the red. Um, very cool. He's got the, uh, the cuffs for his boots, the fur cuffs. Um, let's go through his articulation now. His head is on a, a barbell joint. So there's actually a connection point at the base of his skull and at the top of his neck. So he's got a great range of motion for that. He's, he can do a full 360. He can get, look down. He can look up. He can tilt his head from side to side, and he can even move forward and back a little bit. Good stuff. Uh, shoulders can do a full 360. They can go up pretty far. Uh, there's nothing at the, at the bicep, but he does have a 90-degree bend up at the elbow, and he can do almost 90 down. He also has a swivel at the elbow and the wrists, which I mentioned earlier, um, they peg in. So he's got the full swivel there, but the set on the figure bend down and up. Slightly hindered by his, uh, by his gauntlets, but you can move them out of the way. So it moves up and down and the other set that he comes with. Bend in and out. So he's got excellent articulation on his arms and his neck. He has an ab crunch, which is on a ball joint. So he's got a really good range of motion there. He does have a swivel at his waist, but it's hindered by his belt and, quite frankly... You know, you can still get it, though. You're going to get most of his movement out of his ab crunch anyway. Um, his legs can do a split about that far. He can do the can-can about like that. He's got double, he's got nothing at his upper thigh. He's got double-jointed knees. So he can bring his heel back about that far. His ankles do a full 360. They can bend forward slightly and back about that far very good articulation on this guy awesome accessories i do like the, the unique paid scheme on him he doesn't exactly fit in with your regular orcs but then again that's the point of having a blasted land orc is the fact that he came from a different environment uh so anyhow let's do a size comparison and wrap this up because we're already getting close to 20 minutes here he is next to a modern G.I. Joe figure. As you can see, he fits in pretty well with the four inch scale. 
here he is with a vintage G.I. Joe figure. Which he is noticeably taller than, and you could get away with that using an orc for a classic three and three quarter inch line, I think. Orcs should be a little bit more menacing and a little bit taller if you can if you can manage it. Um, all in all, I do highly recommend this figure. Um, if he's still available in the store, maybe you should try to pick a couple up. Army building this guy might be a little bit tough because he wasn't as widely distributed, but he's still a very cool figure. Um, great accessories, good articulation. I really like the paint scheme on him, and uh, he's, a, he's worth a pickup if you're able to. Uh, this has been AV. Uh, if you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.